So today we're going to be taking a look at this upper receiver from Bear Creek Arsenal. Now, full disclosure, they did send this upper receiver out to me. However, they have no idea what I'm going to be doing with it. So I have not opened this box. I have not looked at what's on the inside. I have not checked any of the gasky screws, any of the staking, anything on that whatsoever. So today we're going to take it out of the box and run it for about 300 rounds and see how it does. So. Let's go ahead and get this guy out. Now this should be, if they sent me the right one, should be their new Gen 2 charging handle in 762 by 39 with their new handguard design. So throw that off to the side for the moment. So this is their new handguard design and of course their Gen 2 side charging upper receiver. Now this is in 762 by 39. This is their heavy barrel profile, which is a very, very fat profile barrel all the way out to a 0.750 taper, which is a straight taper to the end of the barrel. Comes with their spiral flash hider. This upper receiver retails for a whopping $240. Now, I get a lot of comments and concerns about Bear Creek Arsenal's durability, um, how well they're put together, their QA, their QC. So today, straight from the box, just opened up, we're gonna see how it does. Now, something about their 762 by 39 upper receivers. Now, they all come with a enhanced firing pin, which is basically just a longer firing pin. So that will help you get consistent primer detonation when you're using really crappy steel cased ammunition that has very hard primers and sometimes primers that are seated in a little bit further than on like 5.56. Now, we're gonna be using this upper receiver on a lot of different magazines. So full disclosure, you are gonna see some malfunctions because we are using magazines like Pro Mag and ASC and also the very interesting Unimag. So we will be doing some of this stuff, some Elanders. The only magazines for me that have been 100% are the Duramag, the Duramag 28 and 30 rounders. Those are excellent. We're gonna be using a mix of Wolf 122 grain and some Red Army Standard 123 grain. So with all that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and uh, set this guy up, load it up. We'll throw some optics on here and just go ahead and start shooting. Alrighty, so first up, we're gonna try the Red Army Standard Ammunition through the uh, Duramag magazines, which are of course the best magazines. One thing I will say about this is that the barrel is too thick for me to actually get a QD in here, which is why I'm not running the sling currently. Uh, other than that, we're using carbine buffers, carbine springs. Let's see if this optic is here because this is literally the first shot. I have not done anything to it whatsoever. There appears to be a good amount of lube from the factory, so I'm not gonna add any more on top of that. And uh, let's go ahead and see how it does. And cycled, we'll go ahead and do a couple more. This is about 50, 60 yards. Not too bad. All right.
Okay. Yes. Ready? I'm ready. Three, two, one, and. All right. So that was a failure to fully lock back on the Duramag. So this might be actually a fairly softly gas for 762 by 39. So something that I have here in the back is a Trinity Force silent buffer assembly with an H2 buffer and an enhanced power spring. So even with a suppressor on there, that might be too much. You might be good with just carbine springs and buffers uh, to get full lock back 100% of the time because that was actually a good magazine in those Duramag. Oh, it didn't lock back on that mag, but it is a pro mag, so could be an issue with the gun. We are using a Geisley Super 42 spring and an H3 buffer, so it's very soft shooting, but uh, could be a magazine issue because this is a pro mag. Pro mags suck, um, but it didn't lock back for whatever reason. You're so cute. So now, just for a little bit of funsies, we're going to try out some of this. This is tactical or atomic ammunitions that are 197 grade subsonic ammunition. We're going to see if it cycles unsuppressed, but of course if it doesn't cycle, we'll try and throw on the suppressor and see if that'll get it to cycle. All right. With so little recoil. It did cycle. What? <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. Now that's subsonic. That 197 grain stuff is subsonic. It's so very, very quiet. So I'm going to fire once unsuppressed, or once suppressed. Take out the Axle GS 2.0s, the extremes, pretty good. Ooh, so that slamming into steel is much louder than the actual shot itself, which is pretty cool. We'll just go shoot ahead into some dirt. That is, without a doubt, hearing safe. Now this is a Form 1 can that is huge, so it has a lot of volume, but overall that is pretty awesome. I wouldn't shoot a thousand rounds of this suppressed without hearing protection, but like this right now, totally fine. Look, I'm just... <laughs> the delay at like 70 yards. Man, that is nice. Very impressed. And it ran unsuppressed. A little bit of back pressure, but we'll go ahead. Now that we're done with it, we've done the accuracy testing, everything else, and we'll go ahead and talk about this guy. Alrighty, so there was a little bit more than 300 rounds through the BCA. This is again their 16 inch 7.62x39 Gen 2 side charger. It also has their new handguard design. The reason I asked for this one specifically is because it does have their new handguard design. But not everything is perfect. There is, of course, a couple of critiques. The first thing on this upper receiver is that the handguard is actually slightly misaligned to the upper receiver. Now, it's timed off of the barrel via eight set screws, or the barrel nut, I should say. So the barrel nut, just whoever was assembling this, they over torqued it just a little bit too far. They didn't use the right size shims or whatnot. So the handguard is just at a slight, very slight, maybe only a couple degrees, but it is noticeable. If you're super OCD, it might drive you insane. For me, not a big deal at all, but it is something to note. Also, on upper receivers like this, you're gonna get a little bit more machining marks. So like on the muzzle device, on a little bit of the billet upper receiver, because the way that they get this upper receiver is via a solid block. So this is actually a billet 6061 upper receiver. However, the thing about their billet upper receivers is that they're not like cut away for like lightweight. There is a huge amount of material here to be very, very strong, also a little bit heavy. So you're also gonna see like more machining marks on like the BCG and some of the other stuff. It's not gonna be quite as clean, quite as sublime as other upper receivers. Now, just a visual check, the rear dimple, the gas block is dimpled or the barrel is dimpled. So the rear set screw is visibly deeper in. So I know that that rear set screw is in the dimple. So all good there for me. Now, what I just did, I don't really recommend if you get a budget upper receiver from basically anyone, Bear Creek Arsenal, uh, Palmetto State Armory, Radical, and probably several other that I understand, several other that I'm forgetting off the top of my head. You probably want to go ahead and do a couple things. Check the screws on the gas block, Check visually check the gas block alignment, make sure that that is good. Um, 
Other than that, you know, make sure that your firing pin extends beyond the face of the bolt. You might want to check the staking on your gas key, make sure nothing is loose, make sure that the bolt has good tolerances between the bolt and the carrier. And these are all very simple visual things that you can do, and it just kind of helps you make sure that when you actually take this out for the first time, it's going to run for you the way you want. These are not necessarily out of the box, go to war guns. You know, I don't really think any of the budget brands are really set up for that. And sometimes they take a little bit of tinkering to get to run right. Well, over the 300 rounds, we fired about 150 of the Red Army Standard, which is a little bit hotter ammunition than the Wolf. Uh, no issues with that whatsoever, about 150 of the Wolf as well. We did have two failures to lock back, though we are using enhanced buffers and enhanced springs. One of them was with the Geisley Super 42 spring in the other lower receiver, the tan lower receiver, and an H3 buffer. And then we also had one failure to lock back with this one, uh, which is a Trinity Force Silent Buffer Assembly H2 Enhanced Power Spring. So we did have a couple failures to lock back, could be magazine related. One was on a bad mag, one was on a good mag. So again, uh, overall, I would say the reliability for a 7.62 by 39 gun and AR-15 platform was very, very good. Most of the issues you're gonna run into with these guys are gonna be on the extractor because the extractor on the 7.62 by 39s likes to shear off. This is also a Bear Creek Arsenal 762 by 39, 10 and a half inch heavy barreled version. This one here I got quite some time ago and built out with different parts, so it's only a Bear Creek Arsenal barrel. The extractor on this one here at about 5,000 rounds has broken twice, so I've replaced two extractors on this gun. And the first one was Bear Creek Arsenal's, and the second one was Black Rifle Arms, I want to say, like BRA or something like that for the second extractor and uh, that lasted several thousand rounds but again at this point this extractor that's in here right now is also at a couple thousand rounds so it's probably about to break and the reason for that is when you're using a standard 762 by 39 bolt you have to machine out a lot of it to get the uh, case diameter because the case diameter of a 762 by 39 is much thicker than like a 556 so your bolt face is a lot weaker which means that your bolt face itself could crack, but more likely that extractor, because there's a lot of material removed from an already pretty weak component on an AR-15, means you're probably gonna be shearing off a lot of extractors, at least if you're into the very, very high round counts. Overall though, I am extremely impressed with the performance. It did very, very well. Nothing came loose whatsoever. I'm a big fan of the Gen 2 charging handle that they have on these guys, uh, the way that it locks in place. Uh, it actually physically has a bolt holding it in place and then it also has a steel dowel that does not allow it to rotate or move if it did come loose anyways. But on their new designs, on the Gen 1s, I did have it come loose basically every couple hundred rounds you'd have to retorque it down. But these ones here, they do a very, very good job. We are going to be doing a full high round count review, at least a thousand rounds, if not more. But overall, right out of the box, performed very, very well. I didn't do anything to it whatsoever, just looked at it basically, didn't apply any lube, didn't clean anything. And it set up very, very well to do just about everything. It ran well unsuppressed and suppressed. Uh, this is a 4-1 can, so it's not really gonna be indicative to other cans on the market in terms of back pressure. Something that I will say about shooting these suppressed is the rear of the upper receiver is blocked off and blocked off with an o-ring as well so this is really tight in there creating a basically perfect seal so for a right-handed shooter like me you get basically no gas in your face whatsoever even if this was over gas with the suppressor on there all of that gas would be coming out here on the right side if you were left-handed you would be sucking a lot of gas but if you're right-handed shooting with one of these guys it's going to be a very very pleasant suppressed feeling and on top of that this ran that uh, atomic uh, super heavy subsonic ammunition which was really cool that stuff would be really awesome for a couple different applications and you don't have to have a gun in seven or er, sorry in 300 blackout to run it subsonic so overall very very impressed with it one thing i should mention as well here at the end of the video is we did actually shoot some groups with it at just about 50 yards this is wolf 122 grain and then i wanted to kind of proof that out because that is an excellent group that is about one ish moa maybe a little bit more than one moa and this is a second group of it that's at about two and a half three moa and then we did some 123 hornady black 123 grain hornady black really high quality ammunition one flyer but other than that a one whole group again about one moa if you take out the flyer and that was with a very very heavy mil spec trigger so the accuracy out of this 
is exceptional. Now that's because the barrel is a heavy barrel profile and this gun right here, uh, which is also their heavy barrel profile, but it's a much shorter barrel. This has shot sub MOA five round groups with just uh, Red Army Standard and Wolf 122 grain, just because that barrel is so heavy and so rigid, and especially on the shorter barrel, it's so rigid that the harmonics are basically perfect. So overall, very impressed with it. For the money, if you're looking for a fun gun, if you have a ton of 762 by 39 laying around or you have access to it for cheap, uh, an exceptional value, it's a ton of fun. Now, this upper receiver was sent out again by them for free, so I did not pay for this whatsoever. There's never been any sort of financial exchange between me and them. All they do is uh, send me some products periodically and I have bought thousands of dollars worth of their products on top of that as well. So, so far so good on this nifty upper receiver. We will of course update you along the way and because I do have quite a bit of 762 by 39 laying around and it's a very fun caliber to shoot, we will be shooting this guy quite a bit and of course bringing you a more long-term, again, high round count review. So with all that out of the way, hope you all enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Well, I'll take that. We'll shoot another one just to confirm.